Hey guys, Mead Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Sunday morning mountain weather update. Let's do a couple of live cameras first. So up at Alta, Utah, up there in the Wasatch Front, about seven inches of new snow overnight. I still think you might be able to pick up another inch, maybe two inches in a couple of spots of additional accumulation, but there it is. Seven inches, last 24 hours up at Alta. Let me take you into Colorado. So this is snow mass up there, along with Aspen snow mass, buttermilk, the highlands, some very light snow coming down. Snow intensity should pick up this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow morning across uh, most of Colorado. Let me take you up to Steamboat. Some very light snow coming down up at Steamboat. Um, it's obvious we could definitely use some natural snow up there, but... There it is. The uh, The clouds have, have taken over the mountain, and again, snow will likely pick up in intensity this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. Here's radar across the west, and it, this is not a major storm system, although it's going to produce some moderate accumulations in some areas, but I mean, we're just not seeing a whole lot showing up on radar um, across the west. There's orographic snow underway in a lot of places, which can be blocked by mountain ranges. Um, from seeing it on radar, but a little bit of blue showing up over the top of Utah. Certainly you can see it on radar over southern Utah, and there's a little bit of snow over Colorado, but again, things should intensify uh, across Colorado this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow morning uh, for most of the mountain ranges. Let me just kind of give you the lay of the land right here on water vapor. So the moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues, and you can, can kind of see the circulation right here. So that's our area of low pressure. That will continue to slide down and towards southern Colorado by tomorrow and into New Mexico, and then it's going to sweep away. Um, so that's our first storm system, the one that we're dealing with right now. So the next storm system will push a cold front, and there it is. You can almost see the circulation back here. That cold front will dive down 11.5, 11.6. Um, and race down through Montana, B.C., Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. And then it rolls down into southern Colorado and kind of gets hung up down here between Colorado and New Mexico. And the energy that dumps in on the back side of it will spin up an area of low pressure that gets cut off from the flow. And this still looks like a major setup, a major storm system, uh, because as it turns back, it's going to bring snow back to many of the same areas for a second time in Colorado and New Mexico. All right, here are my bullet points this morning. So we've got the current storm system happening today, continuing into tomorrow, especially into tomorrow for Colorado and New Mexico. Um, then the cold front races in 11.5, 11.6 through the Intermountain. Cutoff low develops 11.7 through 11.8 and 11.9, especially for New Mexico and Colorado. We could be looking at a major storm system. And behind that, looking way down the road, there's another cold front that comes racing in from Canada and dives into the Intermountain 11.11 and 11.12. All right, here are the, uh, the key time frames for snow potential. And what I've, I started doing this last season is I'll put an L beside the date if I think it's going to be a light accumulation, an M for moderate accumulation, anywhere from like three to six inches, and a heavy is generally um, seven, eight or more inches of accumulation. Um, so you can see the dates for the Wasatch, the Tetons, and Colorado, and unfortunately I just don't have anything big on the horizon for Tahoe, like Tahoe or even much of the Sierra, unfortunately. All right, let me take you into uh, Colorado here in the time height. This is Loveland Ski Area. Um, humidity forecast in the atmosphere in the next 72 to 80 hours. You can read, it's basically a vertical slice of the atmosphere, um, looking at it. And the timeline's at the bottom. You can read that from right to left. So the humidity starts to increase across Loveland. Um, that's happening now. But we start to see it really increase at that ridgetop, mountaintop level starting this afternoon, tonight, continuing overnight, throughout the morning tomorrow, and maybe even into tomorrow afternoon across a large section of Colorado. And then things start to dry out as that low drops down into southern Colorado, New Mexico, and then it moves away. And then we already start to see the next storm system, that cold front, start to increase the moisture values, um, the humidity um, coming in on uh, late 5, 6, 7. So that's what uh, lies ahead. Let me show you the jet stream by close of business today. And there is our trough sitting right over the four corners today. So 
Um, snow continues to develop across a lot of Colorado as that uh, that trough moves in. And then that low just kind of sits down there in southeast Colorado, and then the whole storm system moves away after 11.4 into 11.5. Now look at the north-south orientation of the jet stream. That'll help to bring in a cold front. That's the one that will deliver the next shot of snow in much colder air. Everybody should get snow out of this, all the way down to the valley levels, the valley floors. There's 11.6, 11.7. Now this is a key moment right here. The cold front has moved on through, but the energy is on the back side. You can see the, the cutoff low over the four corners. That storm system is going to sit and it's going to spin. And then eventually, here it comes. Comes right back over New Mexico and Colorado with a second shot of heavy snow accumulation. And then by 11.9, it's still there. And then it moves away. And then here comes our next storm system. Look at the jet. Um, bring in the next dip, the next trough right there on 11.11 and 11.12. So let's put some moisture on this. Here is the forecast radar in the satellite. By 5.30 this afternoon, snow has picked up in parts of Wyoming, Colorado. Again, not a whole lot left for the Wasatch. Um, let me put this into uh, motion here. Here's Monday morning, snow through Colorado. Now, across Denver in the Front Range, we could see an inch or less of accumulation for Denver proper. If you're above 6,000 feet, you will see additional accumulation. You'll probably be in that 1 to 4 inch range. And then even more than that, through the high Front Range foothills and, of course, up to the Continental Divide, southern Colorado looks to get several inches of accumulation along with northern New Mexico. Um, here's Monday at 515. That storm system is weakening and beginning to move out. Look to the north. Here comes our cold front. That's the one that should bring all snow with colder air. B.C., Montana, Idaho, the Tetons, the Wasatch. And here it moves into Colorado, late 5, into 6. That'll be an all-snow event for Denver in the Front Range with potentially several inches of accumulation. Then the whole thing dives south. Now here's where the low starts to spin up on the backside. Watch 11.7. You can almost see the circulation over the four corners. And all the while, it's still snowing over parts of Colorado and New Mexico. Then here comes the low. Here comes the second push. I mean, we're talking days here where this thing is sitting and spinning and snowing over many of the same areas. This would be another shot of snow for Denver and the Front Range. That's 11.9 in the morning on Saturday, and it's still there, snowing with the backside circulation of the mountains even in the afternoon on Saturday. And then it finally moves away, and then again, there's one more storm system, and here it comes, 11-11, 11-12, dives straight down from Canada with cold air, and this should be an all-snow event as well. So we've got several things to watch on the horizon. Here are my forecast numbers, rest of today through tomorrow. Maybe another inch or two for the Wasatch, two or three, four additional up there through the Tetons and Big Sky, maybe another two or three down at Bryant Head. In Colorado, a lot of this snow has yet to develop, but again, this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow, that's when I think we pick up these numbers in Colorado, anywhere from, say, four to eight inches up there at A Basin, Loveland, Keystone, Winter Park, Cameron Pass, down into Summit County, uh, four to eight inches, Vail Pass, probably four to six um, some good numbers through southern Colorado, right over the top of the sand grays down into northern New Mexico, 5 to 10 inches for those areas. Up in B.C., we could be looking at 5, 6 inches of snow accumulation through the interior. All right, now here's the second time period, and it, it still looks very similar to the last two or three days. Uh, my numbers over the last two or three days. The bullseye is obvious anywhere in pink purples over a foot, and that's a lot of northern New Mexico and Colorado. Um, one, two, two and a half feet of snowfall, grand total. I mean, that's out of two or three different storm systems, but that's, I mean, that's some big time snowfall. You know, what really does it is that cutoff low that, that redevelops over the four corners and comes back with that second push of snow um, that really uh, just nails many of these same areas again. Um, big numbers up over the Continental Divide of Colorado, one, two feet, one to two feet down into Summit County, southern Colorado, one to two feet or more, Kuchara, Tao, Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire. And this would also be pretty significant snow for Denver in the Front Range if all of this plays out. Up in the Tetons, probably a foot, maybe five or six over the Wasatch during this time frame. Five or six up there in the parts of northwest Montana and parts of B.C. So guys, exciting time. A lot of storm systems lined up here. Let me take you back to the first time period. Again, rest of today through tomorrow. And then here's that second time period. 
with an additional two, maybe even three storm systems. Thanks for tuning in here on the Sunday morning. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.